All right, good morning, guys. Happy Friday. Give me a quick sound check here. Pretty crazy action last night. So around 9 o'clock Eastern, we got reports of Israel attacking Iran. And we got a huge flush. At one point, the NQ was down about 2%. The S&P futures were down about 1.5%. So it was looking like we had a limit down coming our way. And now for the most part, things have recovered. QQQ futures down only two tenths. And the S&P futures are flat. So it's kind of like it never happened. But more importantly, on the NQ here, we've got the first daily sell signal. That's a that's a crazy candle. Down to seventeen thousand one eighty, back up to seventeen five. But for the first time since November, we've got the first fresh daily sell signal here on the big three. And not only that, we got a brand new daily sell signal, and the weekly chart has gone from bullish to neutral, from green to blue. Now we are here at support. The, uh, the weekly 21 EMA. The fact that the indicator has gone from bullish to neutral and the fact we have a brand new daily sell signal could suggest one of two things. One, there's a chance we actually don't hold that weekly 21 and we could go lower from here. Or two, even if we do hold that 21 for now, the fact we have a brand new daily sell signal, pretty good implication. We're looking to continue to short the bounces. And I think as long as we're under that 21 EMA, as long as we're under that daily 50, you keep on shorting the pops. And then S&P futures. Um, no daily sell signal just yet. And for now, we still have the weekly buy signal. And then last night, we had the Netflix earnings. Netflix kicking off things here for the big boys. And we're gapping down to about 570 which is what, a 6% pullback? Let me do the math here. Yeah, Netflix is down 7%. So interestingly enough, we go into earnings last night with a lot of squeezes. Five minute, 30 minute, a one hour, a two hour, a four hour, a daily and a two day. I think a pretty good assumption all the squeezes here from the daily chart down to the five minute, they're probably going to fire short here at the open. Now we are gapping down to about that minus three level. So we're actually gapping down to that daily squeeze target. But the, uh, the two day squeeze here, that calls for a move down to about 550. Right near that two day 500 SMA. So I think until things change in a big fashion, any bounces here in Netflix could make for a shorting opportunity. And then next week, we've got Tesla on the 23rd, Meta on the 24th, Microsoft on the 25th, Amazon is April 30th, Apple is May 2nd, Google on April 25th, NVIDIA on May 22nd, and AMD on the 30th. So next week, you've got about 20% of the QQQ reporting earnings. As far as the weighting goes, Microsoft is 9%, Meta is 5%, Tesla is 2 and Google is 5 And the thing about Netflix, it's a, it's a big stock, but it's not a very heavily weighted stock. I think it makes up about 2% of the QQQ, and I don't think it's even a top 15 holding for the S&Ps. So next week, I think it'll be a lot more interesting. If the uh, the Teslas, the Metas, the Microsofts of the world, if they're gapping down like Netflix, that would have a much bigger impact on the S&Ps and the QQQ. So next week shall not be dull. And then like I told you, I think yesterday, and pretty much every day this week, the one that I'm the most interested in is going to be Tesla. And of course, I'll be interested to see Microsoft and Meta and all the other big boys. But as far as going into earnings of the big squeeze, 
I think Tesla here is a pretty good example. The daily squeeze just fired short yesterday. And then on the monthly chart, we got that big monthly squeeze. Based on momentum, based on structure, for now, the odds of a favorite is a better chance that squeeze fire short. Should that monthly squeeze fire short, that can take Tesla down to about, I mean, really down to about 65 bucks. But I think if anything, 100 bucks could be a pretty big target. And I don't think right after earnings, I don't think we're going to gap down, um, you know, 50 bucks. But over the course of two, three, four, five months, if they gap it down after earnings and that monthly squeeze fire is short, there could be a path here down to about 100 bucks. It's a big round number. It is the previous lows from back here in January of 23. And with momentum below that zero line, with price below the trailing stop, below the 21 and below the 50. And now we're getting that bear cross. 21 crosses below the 50. Again, the structure would suggest, for now at least, a better chance Tesla fires to the downside. So that'll be a big one. And then for Microsoft here, let's pull up Microsoft. A lot of squeezes. A lot of them fired yesterday. There was a four-hour squeeze. The daily squeeze fired short. And now we're going into earnings with a two-day and a three-day squeeze. If earnings are bad and they're gapping it down, the two-day squeeze calls for a move back to about 390, 385. And then for Meta, Meta has a daily and a two-day squeeze. If they gap it down, if that squeeze fires short, the daily squeeze calls for a move back down to about 460. So that'll be interesting to say the least. And then QQQ had a few big squeezes here. They fired that daily squeeze short on Wednesday. And now we've got a two-day squeeze setting up and a three-day squeeze setting up. So what I would think is, if they fail to find support here at that weekly 21 EMA, that two-day squeeze might break short. And that calls for a move down to about 410 another 10 or 15 bucks lower. So all kinds of things to keep an eye on. And then for a few short ideas here, we are short Cisco. And then as of yesterday, we're short Roblox. Now, Cisco, admittedly, it's it's a bit of a pain in the ass from the, uh, from the standpoint of it's not going down too fast. The S&Ps puke, the QQQ pukes, and Cisco's moving a bit more like a grandma. But with that being said, I'd like to set up. All right, nothing has changed. No, uh, no warning signs here. And if they can take out support, I think we should catch our move down to about 47 bucks. And then we got short Roblox yesterday. Right before that daily squeeze fired. And I like the risk award. I really like the risk award entry. We're shorting that right under that daily 200 SMA. Therefore, we can cover our short, take our exit back above that 200 SMA. And then from there, if they take things lower from that squeeze, we're looking for a move down to about 34 buckaroos. And they got a few more squeezes setting up here. Um, a five minute, a two day, and a weekly. So we're short Cisco. We are short Roblox. And then a couple more here from the watch list. I'm looking for a bounce here in ARC. I would love to short a bounce in ARC. Ideally, a bounce back into that 45 level. Bounce it back up towards that 200 SMA. Bounce it back up towards that weekly 50. If they can't get it and stabilize it back above that 45, I think a better chance that daily squeeze or the uh, the weekly squeeze, rather, might want to fire short for a bit more downside. So we are watching ARC, and then you got Pinterest here. If I can catch Pinterest on a bounce, that might make for a good short back down to at least that daily 200. 
Same thing here for Workday. Not too far from that 200. So maybe a bounce back towards 260, 265. That might make for a good short. And then there is EXPD. That's got a one hour, a two day, a three day, and a weekly squeeze. I'd like to short that on a bounce. And then SWKS. Big flush. So I'm a little bit late. But they've got that two-day, that three-day, and that weekly squeeze. Any bounce back into 100 bucks, any bounce back into about 102 Pretty much any bounce under that 21 EMA. I would look to short it. And then I think the, uh, the easy short, as far as simplifying everything, would just be shorting the S&Ps of the QQQ on a bounce. And frankly, that'd kind of be my preference. Um, you know, if anything, Cisco, I think, is a good example of you can find a good short setup and take a really good short entry. You can catch a big flush lower in the market. Doesn't guarantee the stock you shorted goes lower. And that, of course, can be a bit frustrating. You found a good setup. You nailed the good entry. You got the right direction in the overall market. They're taking the S&Ps lower. The QQQ is falling apart. And then Cisco here is a bit more of a, a slow poke. A bit of a snail. So that might be the game plan. We'll, uh, we'll keep the Cisco short. We'll keep the Roblox short. But then a big part of me just wants to short the S&Ps of the QQQ. But at this point, I'd have to hold off until the bigger bounce. When and if we get one. And then aside from that, the only other idea I got for you is you've, uh, you've got to accept the max loss. So consider it a bit of an earnings trade, a, uh, a further dated earnings trade. But if you're feeling the frisky, I do like the idea of going out to, you know, October, November, December expiration. And then buying those out the money puts here on Tesla. And I think if anything, you can buy those 100 puts. Again, you got to accept the max loss. If earnings are phenomenal and they're gapping the thing up 10, 15, 20%, then that trade's not going to work. If they gap it down after earnings, then I think that trade could work really well. So October, November, December expiration, V105, 100 strike puts. You could do a butterfly. You could do a call debit spread. But something where you're given that plenty of time, banking on that squeeze breaking short, and then eventually taking price down to about 100 buckaroos. And then aside from Tesla here, I'll take a quick look at the dollar. And we got that weekly squeeze setting up here for the Dixie. So next week, the following week, the week after, if they keep on taking price higher here in the dollar, and they're working that thing up towards 107, 107.50, 108-ish, the strength in the dollar should put a little bit more pressure on the overall market. Got to keep an eye on that. And then last but not least, the VIX. Got to keep an eye here on the VIX. We got as high as about 21 bucks here on the uh, the Iran news. Pulled it back to about 19 bucks here. My thinking is as long as VIX is above, call it 16 bucks. VIX above 16 bucks, I, I think means there's a window open for uh, a bit more volatility. A little bit more nasty, nasty. But that is my spiel. That's my story. I am sticking to it. And we'll see what today has in store. It was a wild, wild overnight session. What a, what a candle. My God. Just a casual $400 turnaround. Nothing to see here. 
And then today, watch your internals. Watch the ticks. Watch the uh, the advancers, decliners. They can be pretty helpful. But all right, guys, any questions, anything you want to take a look at, let me know here. And then I got to hit the road here in a few minutes for an eye doctor appointment. Of all mornings, of all mornings for an eye doctor appointment, I pick today. I pick today. Um, Tony, good morning. Thoughts on Schwab? Yeah, so Schwab's pretty good looking. Very good looking. A plus setup. Perfect 12 out of 12 on the big three score. Buy signals, bull squeeze. The structure is bullish. It's above the trailing stop. In any other market, I'd love to buy that. And better yet, in any other market, I would have to buy that. All right, that, that's my go-to setup. In this market, oh, uh, come on now. Hang tight. In this market, it can be a bit trickier. It's got good trend. It's got good structure. It's a really good-looking daily squeeze. The problem for now is you're not getting too much wind at your back from the overall market. Which means until things change, if, uh, if Schwab's going to go higher, that's a bit of a counter trend move. Right? Counter to the S&Ps, counter to the QQQ, and then more specifically, counter to the financials. Schwab looks way better than the XLF. So I, I think if anything, take all that into consideration. If you want to look for a long here in Schwab, just scale down your position sizing. I think you save your biggest size for when the S&Ps, the QQQ, and XLF look just as good as Schwab. If they all had good structure, they all had squeezes, they all had buy signals, then you jump into Schwab with a bit more size. But being that things are a bit more the opposite right now, you can take a shot here. But again, I would really scale down. Maybe, maybe you cut your typical position size, uh, you know, in half. Maybe a bit smaller. But it's a it's a great looking squeeze. I cannot deny that. And then my brother's keeper says, looking for resistance in the S and P's. Yep, I am. Uh, I am right there with you. I am right there with you, my friend. Hell, I, I'd short it all the way up to about 5'10", 5'12". Meaning, we could get a really big bounce, and I don't think anything changes. I don't think the signals change. I don't think the structure changes. I don't think the short-term path of least resistance changes. So I am right there with you. And then good morning, RB, AXP. So let's see, AXP, um, earnings when? Today, this morning. So they're gapping up to about 218-ish, which is a pretty small gap. I think the key here for a long in AXP, whether or not they can get it back above that daily 21 EMA. If they can get it back above that 21, stabilize the price, cancel out the sell signals, bring on a few fresh buy signals, then that might be in better standing. So I think one, maybe two closes back above that 21. That might do the trick here for the bulls. For the bull skis. And, and yeah, Tony, if, uh, if there's going to be a quote-unquote honey badger in this market, it, it'll look like a Schwab, right? Good trend, good structure, big squeeze, buy signal, perfect 12 out of 12, where a name like a Tesla 
with a negative 12, that's, that's not going to be a honey badger. That's going to be a bit more of a, what's the opposite of a honey badger? A pig. <laughs> That'll be a bit more of a pig. And yeah, I think if we get a bounce back to the daily 21 EMA, that'd be a nice spot to short it. The uh, the risk of war would be pretty pretty solid. If and when we get there. But all right, my friends, I got to hit the road here. I got to go get my contact lenses, got to get my eyes examined. They, uh, they tell me that as a trader, you need your eyes. So I'm going to go do that. And then I'll be back home, and we'll see where things are going at that point. Like every other day this week, shall not be a dull one. But as always, thank you for your time this morning. I appreciate you being here, and I'll see you again, same time, same channel, on Monday morning. Trade good, be safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.